I'm Gracelyn Sorrell. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. If you don't know me, you can follow me at Gracelyn Sorrell everywhere and visit GracelynSorrell.com for more information on me. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to let the Holy Spirit flow. Homosexuality is a trend. It's something that you know is becoming a huge movement and it's really being pushed in this culture right now and it's really great to fight for something that is positive and that is for the people and for love but it's not okay when it's a spirit it's not okay when it's connected to a demonic source and so I say that because I've dealt with it I say that because I have experienced this myself and I at one point in my life thought that I was gay and I thought that you know I was attracted to females more than I was to males when that was a spirit that was a lie and it wasn't really who I was I just feel led to share a little bit of my story so growing up um, I was raised in a Christian household my parents were Christian we went to church every single Sunday but I never really knew God I never really developed a relationship with Christ until I began to question I was like wait a minute so I'm going to church but I'm not really taking away anything you know they're telling me about Jesus how he died for me but I never really you know comprehended and understood what that meant for me and for my life and you know I lifted my hands and I tried to encourage other people in the church but I never really had a relationship with God so in going to church I was actually tempted with homosexuality um, there were groups of females who um, were dealing with homosexuality or bisexual and like there were little whispers in the church as to like who was dating who. A lot of the relationships were same sex and I was confused like I'm a young girl and these people are telling me like this person likes you and they're you know female and I'm just I was really confused as to what was happening because I didn't ask for this I didn't ask for females to be attracted to me um, so in the church was where it started for me it was actually a very sad place because I was young and I I was very impressionable and you know I was like well hey like if they like me let me let me see what this is all about and so that moment when I made that decision to see what this is all about I opened my heart to the enemy and I gave him room to come in and tempt me with the spirit of homosexuality I continued to go to church I continued to lift my hands and you know act like I was just this shy quiet cute girl which I was I was shy quiet and cute but I was suffering in silence I did not understand why females were attracted to me in the church and so I kind of felt like there was an issue with it the other half of me was like well there's nothing wrong with this because a lot of the females are doing it so let me partake in this drama too and I mean my innocence knew that this was wrong my inner man knew that this was wrong I was pressured into that sexual spirit and I was pressured into into thinking that I liked females um, and then after that you know a couple years went by I was sexually assaulted by the same sex and it was like that spirit was lingering throughout my childhood leading up to the point where I was sexually assaulted and no I wasn't gay I was not bisexual I was straight but I was dealing with a spirit of homosexuality dealing with a spirit that you know is not you that you know you didn't want but it just kind of came and you accepted it and you opened your heart up to the wrong things that's how you know it's a spirit when homosexuals say that this is just who I am it's not who you are because your identity is not in who you love it's not in who you are attracted to so gay is not who you are lesbian is not who you are you are a child of God and so I just want to just break that lie off of your life that you know you are this or you are that like no the only thing that you are is a child of the most high king he calls you love he calls you friend he calls you child so when it comes to homosexuality and purity you must know that you could have been dealing with a spirit from birth from the womb and you're growing up in this uncomfortable position that you never wanted to even be in and that was my case that was my situation and so the way that I got through it was by confronting and telling myself the truth and saying wait a minute 
this is wrong. Like just something in my soul, something in my spirit knew that this was not who I was, that this was not what I wanted to do. I did not want to be attracted to girls, but it just happened like that when I was younger because of that spirit was so heavy in the actual church. So when I got serious about pursuing God, I began to say, Lord, why is this happening to me? And what really opened my eyes was the sexual assault. And the sexual assault actually led me to be even more attracted to females. But at the same time, I was like, hold on, this is just not who I am. This was not who God has called me to be. Um, and so I asked God, who am I really, Father? Like, who did you create me in my mother's womb to be? Who did you ordain me to be here on earth? And as I started asking those questions, God removed the layers of abuse, of hurt, of peer pressure, of um, lust, of desire. Um, he began to peel off those layers and, and call me by name, call me Graceland. He began to reveal to me why I was put here on earth. And so I've realized many homosexuals that I've come in contact with and talked to and even some friends of mine, I saw this pattern of them conforming to the world because they never got the love at home because their mother died when they were younger, because their parents got divorced, because there was division in their own home, so they went to the world to where they saw love and, and unity and respect and fighting for something great and fighting for something that they thought they were, but really it was their own household that divided them from true love. And so they tried to go to other sources to find the passion, to find the purpose, and that was in the gay pride parade, and that was in the identities that the bullies spoke over your life, and that was in sexual assault, the deaths of your, your family members, the deaths of your loved ones, it was in the alcoholism of your mother and seeing the only love that you had in your home split apart and the only person that ever loved you neglect you. It was from that breakup. It was from life. And you felt like to be accepted and to find love, you had to follow the world's customs and what the world was offering because that looked more like love than what was in your own home that's in your own home right now. And so there's no other choice than to be gay. There's no, like, that is what fulfills you. That's what makes you feel the best. That's what makes you thrive. The colors just give you this joy. The energy brings you this peace of mind and knowing that you're not alone in this. But really, that's what the enemy wants you to think. He wants you to go out and feel like this is where you belong because everybody else is broken, because everybody else is dealing with something that they never knew how to deal with from their childhood. Because you got abused in the church, because it started in the church for you, you strayed away from God and you said, you know what, the world is better than this. Homosexuality is better than this. Alcoholism is better than this. Drugs, sex, alcohol, money is better than this. Success is better than what I'm dealing with right now in my heart and in my home. What I noticed was that was my coping mechanism. Um, I was trying to cover up the pain. So I went through a process of trying to heal myself and trying to get myself in a position of joy and happiness when my way was not working. Healing by myself never worked and trying to confront it myself was not the answer. I could not do it without God because God, if he knitted you in your mother's womb, as the scripture says, it means that he knew every flaw. He knew every piece of, of DNA. He knows every part of you that you can't even begin to comprehend like he knows the number of hairs that are on your head he created the sun the moon and the stars he named every single star he is the creator of the universe and so yeah you you're atheist and you don't believe in the lord because it's impossible for one god to create you know people and in, in the world and it's just you know there's no way that one man could have died for everyone and saved everyone from their sins when you're doubting 
what you didn't get, which is this unconditional love from the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but in the beginning of your life, of your physical life into this earth, you were neglected. You doubted your existence. Your parents never loved you. Your parents, they never wanted you, so they rejected you from the womb. So you have scars, and you're like, okay, so I'm going to identify myself the way that my bullies identified me, and that's going to lead me to be gay, and that's going to lead me to identify myself as everyone around me is identifying themselves, and that's going to lead me to have a baby with the same sex because I need someone to love, because I need someone to take care of, because nobody ever took care of me. So it's deeper. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. But there's a disconnect in this heart with your Father God in heaven.